On Saturday, November 2nd, starting at noon, Kevin Williams is helping sick kids by playing video games. He needs your help to raise $1,000 for the Chio Foundation. Donate at extra-life.org slash participants slash 347-875. Camera, action! Cut! Cut! Welcome to Ropes to Reels, part of Wrestle Media, where everything is wrestling and wrestling is everything. This week, episode 93, we look at Avengers Endgame. I'm at Adam Conta. And I'm stupid excited, Sir F Word. Yay! Before we begin, no. let's let everybody know up front that this is a spoiler-filled review. Oh, yeah. Th- literally, you cannot talk about this. But the trailers were freaking perfect, man. Didn't say a single thing, but we're going to say it all. We are. So if you have not yet seen Avengers Endgame and you don't want the movie spoiled, please turn off this episode, share it with a friend, and then come back to it once you've seen Avengers Endgame, because we do not want to be the ones who spoil the movie for you. So again, we're stating here, spoilers, Avengers Endgame. All right, now, Drew, before we start into the meat and potatoes of the episode, I wanted to quickly let our listeners know that we've got a contest going on right now over at WrestleMedia.ca. If you sign up for our free newsletter, you'll have a chance to enter a, uh, our, our contest for your opportunity to win a pair of tickets to the Chinlock Wrestling House of Hardcore Show in Kingston, Ontario on June the 15th. These are floor seats. We know that the Chinlock Rumble will be making its return. Earlier in the day, there's going to be the Legends Convention featuring Busters, Tugboat, Mark Henry, Billy Gunn, Hornswoggle, uh, Jimmy Corderas, Jimmy Hart, and basically a whole lot more. Who knows if any of those legends will show up for the evening show? Who knows what matches will be booked? All I know is it's going to be one you don't want to miss. And if you haven't got your tickets yet, you can go visit chinlockwrestling.com for all that information. Or you can visit WrestleMedia CA, sign up for us, our newsletter, get your information, and get your chance to win. We've also got a couple of appearances coming up that we wanted to tell you about. First, on Saturday, May 11th, we will be at Rock Solid Wrestling's Danger Zone event at the Collingwood Curling Club in Collingwood, Ontario, featuring a main event, a submission match for the Canadian Heavyweight Championship. Irish Jake O'Reilly with Asher Benjamin in his corner faces Canadian Heavyweight Champion Impact Wrestling star Cody Deaner with former WWE Intercontinental Champion and UFC Hall of Famer Ken Shamrock in his corner. Tickets are on sale now at rocksolidwrestling.ticket.ca. On Sunday, May the 19th, we will be at the Cottage Country Comic Con at the Mariposa Conference Center in Aurelia, Ontario, where uh, WWE Hall of Famers The Honky Tonk Man and Greg the Hammer Valentine Rhythm and Blues will also be in attendance. They've got a great package deal if you want to meet and greet them. Visit their website at cottagecountrycomiccon.com for more details. Thank goodness we don't have a website like that because... (laughs) <laughs> I don't know. You would never remember that. Oh, God, no. I thought you meant like, oh, pronouncing it would be difficult. It's not that bad, but no. I, I, what did you say? I didn't even remember. And it's we great. talked about it earlier, Saturday, June 15th, Chinlock Wrestling and House of Hardcore's Legends Convention and Chinlock 5 event from the Leon Center in Kingston, Ontario. We will be there. We talked about all the great names that will show up, and who knows who else will be there, except for us, of course. Hmm. We know that we will be there for sure, and we want you to be there too. Once again, that's Chinlock Wrestling dot com for your tickets all right drew previously on ropes to reels we asked some questions but nobody answered them so Fantastic. now we're going to go straight into the news with some hollywood headlines cool viceland has been airing a new show that looks at the tragic and controversial sides of professional wrestling it's called dark side of the ring it's gotten a lot of praise including some who have participated in the actual process recently they tweeted a photo of kevin von eric clutching a yellow rose to symbolize the death of his brother David. The Von Erics will be featured on a show that will air, um, uh, will have already aired by the time you are all listening to this. They also wrote that viewers would hear his side of the story like never before. Kevin actually responded to this tweet and praised the episode that will be airing. He explained that the episode will cover things that have never been discussed, and he thanked them for coming out there and giving him the time to lay the story out. Past episodes can be watched on Viceland's website, and new episodes airs Wednesdays at 9 on Viceland. Have you had a chance to check out any of those episodes yet? I want to binge them. Oh, I, I'm okay. waiting for all of them to come out and then just one by one because I, I, I'm, I'm that. I'm, I'm, I'm of the Netflix generation mm-hmm. where it's just like, 
as soon as it's done, I'm like, oh, that was so good. And then I don't want to wait a week. No, it might be fun. Uh, if you want, let me know. We'll, we should sit down, take it like a whole afternoon. We'll watch the episodes and then we should record like bonus episodes. That'd be fun. For maybe we'll make it a Patreon stretch goal. Something I like it. that would be cool. Maybe we can get those YouTube numbers up, eh? Oh. So if we can maybe hit a certain number of YouTube subscribers, we'll do our little reviews of the Vice Lane series. I like it. So there you go. Go subscribe over to our YouTube channel. If you need to know how to get there, just visit WrestleMedia.ca. Here's a question for you. Dude. How much money do you think The Rock makes per movie? I assume The Rock makes like $1,000 of flex, to be honest with you. <laughs> well, he does. I think he does make that much per tweet. Something like that. He actually charges studios uh, like uh, an, an exorbitant amount of money to tweet promotion for movies he's in, by the way. These are not like... Oh, jeez. <laughs> Although I guess at that point, once he's done his job, he's got his money. He doesn't really... It doesn't really matter if the, the movie does well or not. That's very true. But it, at that man, he was tired of making crap. I mean, you've heard the famous story about how he like, you know, ended or he started out with just seven bucks in his pocket before he started on his journey to superstardom so i mean he probably appreciates having money a lot more than other people do <laughs> yeah 100 percent. so how much appreciation do you think he requires over every feature i'm thinking three mil sir uh you grossly underestimate the power of the rock uh he's made do. he's made variety's 2019 star salaries list and they list him at making 20 million dollars per film in 2019 Variety yeah. noted that The Rock routinely makes $20 million or more on his big action movies. I guess this makes sense. Still $10 million short of that Jim Carrey money, though. <laughs> and if you've seen the uh, trailer for the new Sonic uh, the Hedgehog movie, you know he is earning that $30 million and putting it all towards mustache wax. This, since this episode started, I've been waiting for the opportunity to somehow segue this into that Sonic trailer. <laughs> I'll let it get. I'll let you get it off your chest because if I don't, then I know that you're just going to be waiting. You're going to try to fit it in somewhere else that makes no sense in the episode. So go right ahead. My initial thought was do it with Hawkeye. I'll explain that in a second. <laughs> but first, what the hell was that? <laughs> that was insane. That was nonsense. That was a college student's project <laughs> that he threw out there to say like look proof of concept i learned what you taught me now i need like years and years of experience and knowledge to actually make this movie but nope this is paramount who decided you know what you don't know be cute we'll take the stars out of the paramount mountain and we'll just put the rings all around it and be like hey it's sonic we know what we're doing hey look that sign says green hill zone you can trust us and the moment the moment that rat can i say the b word uh, I would prefer either you of them. Didn't. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That one you can say. Yeah, you know the one I'm talking about. The B A. Yeah. Yeah. You can. Okay. Say when that. that rat bastard shows sure. up <laughs> and he just looks right at the screen, confident in its appearance, I'm like, oh dear. And then it just keeps showing up and it keeps showing up. By the way, uh, Dwight is perfect casting for Sonic. I've never had a problem with that. He's a great voice. It's just he looks like Deviant Art. I it's, still was kind of hoping it would be Jaleel White. <laughs> Yeah, it would have been fun. But man, that looks like garbage. It looks like the kind of garbage that you need to be like off your rockers to enjoy, which I plan to be. <laughs> this is a DVD that I'm going to watch alone in my room to see what the heck is going to happen to my inner soul. Who's a wrestler uh, you'd like to see show up in that movie for no reason whatsoever? Ryback. <laughs> I, Why? <laughs> Big the Cat. I want Ryback to be Big the Cat because I think that's funny. Uh, you're not wrong. That would be hilarious. I agree Is with that. Is it bad that. that I thought about that before you asked the question? I'm impressed that you thought about it before I asked the question. It means you're learning how my brain <laughs> works and how I'm going to operate here. So thank you for that. I appreciate you taking the time to learn something. No worries. And only when it comes to stuff that means nothing <laughs> in the greater <laughs> scheme of everything. Now, we've been talking about The Rock. Yeah. And that kind of segues into our next story about Brock Lesnar. Okay. Brock Lesnar appeared as the keynote speaker at the Assinibolia Sports Celebrity Dinner and Auction this past Saturday at the Prince of Wales Center in Assinobia, Saskatchewan. My apologies to anybody out in Saskatchewan if I am pronouncing that incorrectly. Lesnar was asked who would win a street fight between him and The Rock. Lesnar scoffed at the idea and said the two are good friends. Oh. But he didn't say who would win, although oh. I assume the scoff means that he thinks he would win, which, to be fair, 
I agree with him. He's got the he's got the experience of getting a fist in the face, which I'm sure Rock has as well. Just not you know a professional fist. I mean, Rock's a big dude, but it takes more than size and muscles to be a good fighter. Brock Lesnar has literally trained to be a fighter and has been the UFC heavyweight champion, meaning that he is the best fighter in his weight class by definition. Yep. That would be hard to beat. I don't care who you are. But which one of them earns $1,000 of flex? <laughs> Who's the real winner here? Uh, I guess when you look at it that way, I suppose you could say that Rock is the winner in that particular situation. Lesnar also revealed that The Rock has asked him to appear in some of his movies. But the deal is that Rock always has to win their fights, and that is why Lesnar always says no to the offer. Lesnar then went on to say, the difference between us is that he gets pedicures and I don't. Let's first of all break down that statement. Um, don't see really what that has to do with anything, Lesnar. But uh, It's a difference. Uh, you're right. It is a difference. But I mean, even if you're a quote-unquote macho man, ooh yeah, uh, you know, what is having, you know, what's wrong with getting a pedicure? You're not a farmer's boy. Well, I guess that's true. Lesnar definitely is. He, is, he, he lives haystacks and eats them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In one gulp. You're not wrong about that, no. I have I have a hard time believing this is true, though, what he said about the condition of the contract. That Rock has to win? Yeah. Does that not seem a little silly to you? When has Rock lost in a movie? I, I get what you're saying. Well, I mean, technically, Scorpion King, he loses. When when it's his contract and his production company. Okay, right. I, okay, fine. But it, does that not seem a little ridiculous? It is, but at the same time, it's but Hollywood. But you believe it. I believe it. Because okay. Hollywood has these types of contracts where you, Tom Cruise, it's literally been revealed, has to run. If there's a reason, <laughs> if it's his production company, he has to run. That's so stupid. It is stupid, but that's what movies are. They're stupid. And people have like... Does like, he run in Jerry Maguire? Yep. He runs to Meg Ryan. Uh, but it's like... Meg Ryan's Will in that movie. <laughs> who is the woman? It's, uh, he runs to the woman, whoever the hell she is. I don't remember who the actress is, Renee but I know Zellweger? it's... I think it's Renee Zellweger. Okay. It's definitely not. He runs to the, the heartthrob of the movie, whatever. But um, it's also like The Rock... Not The Rock. Will Smith has so many different things in his contract whenever he does a movie. Hmm. It, it, it's just a thing. They want to perform the way they want to perform, and they've gone to the accolade that they can do it. Wow. That's insane to me. Maybe that's why Vin Diesel didn't get along with him on the set of the Fast and Furious. Maybe he thought Rock was a bit of a prima donna. Well, Rock thought he was a prima donna, so hey, back and forth. Well, it looks like that might not be a problem for much longer. What? Well, one of the newest pieces of information to hit the internet this week is that Vin Diesel posted a video on Instagram oh, yeah. with John Cena teasing the leader of the C Nation maybe joining the Fast and Furious franchise. That's dope. I'm in. Any, anything. Anything they do, man. The Fast and Furious, just do a line of coke and write something. <laughs> and then they'll just put it in a movie. The ninth installment of the franchise is set to be released May 22nd, 2020, and filming is set to start in late May or early June of this year. Now, in the Instagram video message, Vin Diesel referenced Pablo, which was his nickname for the late Paul Walker, who co-starred with Diesel in most of the Fast and Furious films before he passed away tragically in 2013. Diesel said that he felt like Pablo sent him another, quote, soldier for the fight for truth. And after saying... <laughs> It's, it's, I'm sorry, it's Fast and Furious. It's Vin Diesel, man. It's, fa it's Fast and Furious. What do you think you're making here? After saying that, Cena walks into frame wearing a blue suit, did his you-can't-see-me gesture before giving a wink, and Diesel finished the video by saying, all love, always. And by the way, I've seen the video. He's super serial about the whole thing. He does not smile once. It, it is like he is announcing the birth of a child. It is just like so gravitas-filled. Which I don't have a problem I mean, it's with. John Cena. It is a big deal, uh, literally and figuratively. You're happy that he's joining the Fast and Furious franchise. I'm happy he's joining the Fast and Furious franchise because it means more movies for us to review, first of all. And <laughs> secondly, uh, because it'll probably do a lot for John Cena's career. And I'm all for John Cena getting more movie stuff. I think he's great. Now, I do want to talk about what may be the 280-pound Samoan in the room. Um Oh, yeah. 
we talked about the ridiculousness of con Hollywood contracts. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's out of the realm of possibility that Vin Diesel is doing this just to poke at the rock? I don't know. Vin Diesel has that much power. They saw really. I, they he s- got the last witch hunter made. The last witch hunter has a bad ending, but it's not a bad movie. Right, but he still got it made. He is still what got I'm it saying. Made. That's true, but because that's, that's are you that's telling hard me work. that's not are you telling me anybody but Vin Diesel could have walked into a studio and been like, okay, so here's the deal. It's Vin Diesel, <laughs> but he's a witch hunter. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is. He put hard work and effort into it. I don't think he just showed up and said it, right? I don't know if you can have the I'm hard not work. I'm questioning the guy's work ethic. I'm saying he's got juice. That's what I'm saying. I don't think that much juice. I think that The Rock Really? I think The Rock was so For successful. For the Fast and Furious franchise, it's his franchise. He is the Bruce Willis of He is to this as Bruce Willis is to Die Hard. He makes all the decisions. Fair, and he might have like maybe campaigned for it, but I don't think the production, I don't think the studio was like really hard on like, mm, I don't know if we should do John Cena because it's John freaking oh. Cena and they got the rock and it's like, okay, I'm not it saying, worked. I'm also not saying that Vin Diesel had to convince the studio. John Cena's a safe bet. Okay. So you're thinking that he went out to find John Cena and asked him to be in the movie. Yes. Okay. Or specifically he wants mm. John Cena. And my question is, do you think he's doing it to poke the bear and say, I can get me another big time wrestler movie star. I don't need you rock. Possibly. I mean, The Rock did poke fun at him in fighting with my family. So. Oh, there, there is definite heat there still, and really? it ha- and it has not done. And look at the and The Rock. Look at this. This is basically this is a game of one-upmanship, because Rock and Diesel butt heads on the last Fast and Furious movies. Still a lot of heat there. Rock says to Vin Diesel, "I don't need your Fast and Furious movie." I'm going to go make my own movie with Jason Statham, and we're going to make a lot of money, and it's going to be awesome. And Vin Diesel comes back and says, that's fine. I don't need you. I'm going to go get me another wrestler, and we're going to do another Fast and Furious movie, and it's going to make more money than your little spinoff project. This has officially become a... This is the this is a pissing contest. This is the Fast and Furious Wars. This, this is the <laughs> Monday Night Wars of the Fast and Furious franchise. This is a pissing contest in which the urine stream are millions and millions of dollars. <laughs> I thought you were going to say testosterone. Hollywood is a messed up, weird place. It's great. It's a lot like wrestling, and here we are. Hey, Hey, this is a commercial for Patreon.com slash WrestleMediaCA, where you can get early access to episodes of your favorite WrestleMedia shows, get full uncut and uncensored versions of your favorite shows, and more. Don't want to hear this commercial on your podcast anymore? Sign up at our main event tier and get these episodes ad-free. Want to hear your own commercial here instead of ours? We've got tears for that, too. Visit patreon.com slash WrestleMediaCA and join the WrestleMedia revolution today. Which leads us to our big question of the day, Drew. All right. What in the comic book nonsense does this have to do with professional wrestling? Very appropriate. Well, Avengers Endgame features Dave Bautista as Drax the Destroyer. Briefly. Very briefly. (laughs) Too briefly, in my opinion. But But he shows up, so it counts. You're right. He's absolutely there. He does say some lines. Um, he doesn't have the best line of the Guardians of the Galaxy. That goes to Mantis, who demands a knife fight. Which uh, <laughs> Between Thor. Oh, yeah, spoilers. We already said that. Between Thor and Chris Evans. Which makes me so happy. Uh, you know the ep- Chris Pratt, you mean. Yeah, Chris Pratt. My apologies. <laughs> Let's face it. Chris Evans beats everybody at anything. Yeah. Um, I'd like to point out something that was revealed. So <laughs> when group talks... And uh, so she says, knife fight. And they go, no knife fight. And Groot says, I am Groot. And they both laugh. It's implied, according to sources, that he was just talking about um, measuring genitals. I don't believe that. I don't know, man. It's Groot. He's a teenager. And it's they were able to hide it. It's If it makes your headcanon happy, believe it. it but the, I don't think it. It was the same source that said when Groot was leaving, he looked at Rocket and said, Dad. Yeah, but that doesn't mean anything. Just and again, no. I'm just saying, like, there's history to it, and also it just kind of adds to the story, to me at least. <laughs> I think it just makes you giggle, and it appeals to your reptilian brain. No, it it appeals to the t- the fact that we're getting as Guardians of the Galaxy, which I'm okay with. And they they mixed it with a little bit of humor in there, and oh, threw a little bit of grossness in there because it's James Gunn. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. My apologies. Yeah, that's a, that's like end of movie. 
Here comes the money. Avengers <laughs> Endgame. <laughs> oh. Um, okay, so how much did it oh. cost to make this movie? Got to be like 300 mil. Very close. 356 million dollars. Yep. And 356 million dollars. And you know what? It's put to good use. Uh, yeah. The effects, the sets, everything was beautiful. Obviously, the movie is still in theaters. It will be continuing continuing to make money. As of this writing, Drew, how much do you think Avengers Endgame has made? I actually know that it broke the record opening night for a billion. So I'm going to go 1.38, Bill. Uh, very close. Uh, 1.48 billion, but yeah, I mean, for goodness sake, a billion dollars in its first weekend. Opening night. Opening night it was, it reached that? Yep. Jeez. Right? It broke a record, (sighs) and I don't think anything. Like, remember, you've Um, you've kind of felt... I know this is going to sound crazy, but but don't poo-poo me on this, because this thing's a phenomenon. There are people out there who speculate Detective Pikachu will break it. It's... mm. Japan. Think, well, not just and Japan, China. worldwide, this yeah. thing is a phenomenon, yeah. right? So mm. it's possible. It's possible. Possible. However, th- after this that... This could be a record-setting year for the movie industry in general. But after those two, remember how it just kind of felt like record-broken, record-broken, record-broken? I think we're going to be done with that for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we're going to see as many news stories like that. It's uh, it's crazy to think about how much money this, this movie is making, uh, but... Also, not surprising. Look, I've seen it twice already, and I'm, I'm going to go back and see it again. I want to go watch it now, like just us talking about it. I want to go back and watch it again. It's so good. All right, let's get to some fun facts about Avengers Endgame. That we didn't cover? That we didn't cover. <laughs> There's still a lot of them, actually. All right. Robert Downey Jr. was the only cast member who read the entire script. That makes sense. Of course it does, he right? An integral part of all of it, basically. Yeah. Isn't that interesting, though, that they were like, you can't see the whole script, just this stuff. Like, I mean, yeah, that is really taking your protection to a whole other level. Well, they did that with Infinity War, but it's kind of interesting that it was Benedict Cumberbatch that was the only one to read the whole script. Right. Instead of Thanos or Josh Brolin. Now, even though Captain Marvel was released one month before the film, Brie Larson shot her scenes for this movie first. Which makes sense, because I still don't know her character. (laughs) They they haven't developed her as well as they've developed anyone. (laughs) Evangeline Lilly and Paul Rudd were filming Ant-Man and the Wasp and this film at the same time. Interesting. As they did with the previous film, the Russo brothers wrote a letter to fans asking them not to spoil anything about the movie as part of a viral campaign on the internet. Sorry. The hashtags were hashtag don't spoil the end game and hashtag Thanos demands your silence. Um, but we're not, but we're not spoiling. We warned it, it immediately. We warned people but about spoilers. Technically, yeah, we have spoiled this entire no, movie. I, I, no, no, sorry, not counting it. <laughs> Don't give me don't even give him an inch. <laughs> Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige has said that Star Trek the Next Generation's All Good Things, the series finale episode of Star Trek the Next Generation, inspired this film. That's kind of crazy. But awesome. <laughs> I think that's the one with the credits of the signatures and whatnot. Well, no, I no, cuz it, it's Was from it cause, no, cuz the signature stuff is from one of the Star Trek movies. Oh, okay. The original cast. Oh. But they very well, it, listen, it would make sense if Kevin Feige was like, you know, I like Star Trek. I've probably seen these movies. And you know what movie had a really cool end credit sequence? Star Trek six or five or whichever one it was. Mm. You know, nothing wrong with that. For no, goodness sake, homage and inspi- inspiration is an awesome thing. Scott Lang storage number is 616. Yeah, because it's Earth 616. The creator of Thanos makes a brief cameo in the film. He's also in the support group. Is he now? Yes, he is. All right, then. This, uh, the song that Captain America and Peggy Carter are dancing to is the same song that Nick Fury is listening to in Captain America's apartment after he is attacked in Captain America the Winter Soldier. That's a weird choice. I think it's kind of awesome. <laughs> well, no, I mean, like, character-wise. Yes. Like, Captain America, you know, I, I want to do a romantic dance with uh, this song that one of my mentors was murdered by. See, now I want to go back and watch Captain Marvel to see if... I, I'm pretty sure is there not a conversation between Fury and Marvel about music? And I wanted to see if maybe he brought up something about like liking the old maybe, music. Maybe, I don't maybe. know, man. Um, during I don't want to go back to that movie. <laughs> 
during the scene where um, Professor Hulk is talking about the idea of time travel, he's eating his own Ben and Jerry's ice cream flavor that they talk about in a previous <laughs> Avengers movie. When the heck did they talk? Somebody was saying I need to go buy a Hulk ice cream. Yeah, something like oh, that. Oh, son of a gun. When was? Ah, oh, now that's going to bug me. This, I think, is the most interesting of the fun facts that I've read. It was Ragnarok. Continue. <laughs> Aaron Taylor Johnson's character, Quicksilver slash Pietro Maximoff, was seen in set pictures for this movie, hinting that he might return or will just briefly make an appearance in a flashback scene. But in the final cut of the movie, he's not there. That uh, throw people off. You, th- you think they just brought him in, took a picture yeah. of him, and like, yeah, we'll just mess with the internet? A hundred percent. I mean, these guys know how to work the internet. Just look what they did for the trailer. Like, anything they did, they were I working mean, people. Look, I could sit there and say that's ridiculous, but this movie was over $300 million, so who knows? They probably just bought him a sandwich. Hey, you want to stand around for like five minutes? <laughs> Drew, what's the Rotten Tomatoes score for Avengers Endgame? 96. Uh, very close, 95%. Ah, I got, oh, I was so close with that one. Crap. Let's talk about uh, some other people who are not Harvard art house film noir teeny weenies. What do the people think of it, Drew? That's what we want to know. This was... Hurtful. I'm sure read. difficult for you. <laughs> I did not I did not like this person. Uh well then should we should you know what? Let's do like they did with Endgame. Let's have our sad <laughs> moment and then we'll end it with something happy. Go ahead. All right. Mr. B. Wade. Mr. B. Wade called this bitterly disappointing. <laughs> he said, I invested the last eight, nine years in MCU Marvel movies and TV shows. Well, you missed a year, you moron. <laughs> It's not all connected. This is no culmination of the entire MCU. Critical parts were cut out of the movie. Like what? He doesn't go to say. Okay. First half was utterly dull so and boring. That's that Quicksilver scene. That we're talking yeah, that's about right. Earlier. This doesn't tie that up at all. Well, there's, no, there's no Pietro. <laughs> the first half was utterly dull and boring. You shut your mouth. Now, I have heard some people say that they feel like the first half of the movie is slow because it's... It's All talking action. and no punchy. But I disagree with that yeah. completely because that's the strength of the film is the character building and the emotion. And we talked about this already. But anyways, he's not alone in that opinion. But in but my opinion is that those people's opinions are wrong. <laughs> Turned many characters and their storylines into a disgrace. Again, he doesn't give any examples. He's just saying, well, I he hate can. this. It's stupid. It's stupid. It's stupid. Moron. <sighs> Plenty of out-of-place jokes. Well, you were saying like the drunk thing kind of gets a little tedious at some point. I don't think that's it. It's more... I, I What I think he's talking... And again, I've heard other people say this, and I, I do understand where they're coming from. I disagree, because I understand the idea behind it is they Marvel has always had a little bit of levity to its drama. I think what they're referencing is stuff like, in the big battle, Captain, Amer- uh, Captain America and Thor standing next to each other, and Thor is like... I want that one. You take the small one. You know, funny joke. Sure. But in a battle for the universe, maybe seems a little out of place. But in a fun battle, I get it's the whole thing is comic book nonsense. If you don't have a little bit of levity, then you're getting, you know, the DC universe and everything is super serious all the time. And we're getting there. I don't even don't even. Oh, it's going to be great. Uh, The colors were awful. Listen, nothing could be great after watching this movie. You know what? We'll get we there. We got to we'll clean our there. palette of, cl- we'll of get cleanliness. There. We'll get there. Did you hear that? No. The colors were awful. <laughs> what were you watching? I, I have a feeling like he came in only in the last act of this movie because it's it's a much. The third act is a little bit darker, but even but, then, but even it's then really it well a, shot and clear. Yeah, you understand what's going on. The choreography is brilliant. Camera work is nice. It's yeah. It's not like the Doomsday fight. <laughs> yeah. I'm so excited one day. The final battle deserves my one and only star. <laughs> well, Fine. I mean, at least he recognized that greatness. I mean, also, that's a third of the movie. <laughs> However, okay, that final battle payoff was clearly rushed, felt underwhelmed, just as I was starting to enjoy it. At what part? At what point does that fight just calm down? Or... How much more do you need? Yeah, it keeps what else going. could they, they did everything. The cli- <laughs> there was nothing else you could do. The climax was literally a b- big bang. Like the snap was like a huge boom to cap it off. I I just literally don't like that. 
That fight scene was an hour. You need more than an hour? What else do you need? Apparently, he wants the Blu-ray digital release to be an extended version to focus on other characters. Like, so this clearly, he read the Quicksilver thing, and he's very upset. He was like, I wanted Pietro. That's the whole reason I came to this. <laughs> You're going to get more characters in the next movies. These were the ones to cap off the ones you've been learning about for the past 10 years. <laughs> Moron. Anyway, continue. You want to shut up. Let's move on to some happier territory from uh, Larshu Jimans 24, who says the ending made all 22 movies worth it. If you're going to watch this movie, avoid any spoilers. Sorry. <laughs> and even spoiler free reviews. No, we didn't do that crap. Do you um do, do you nope. do that when you when you're going to see a movie that you're really excited about? Do you nope. avoid reviews and anything like that? I don't even watch the second trailer. Okay, so you do avoid them. I avoid all costs. See, I, 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 that stuff never bothers me. I, I'll, I, I, I do like reading reviews and listening to reviews because I'm curious to see what other critics who are similar minded to me think about the films. But uh, to each their own. Which is why I'm not going to say anything about the movie, not even my opinion. <laughs> all all right, gonna, all I'm going to say is the crowd applauded three times during the movie and stood up to clap their hands after. Did your did your audience applaud no, afterwards? And I'm glad. I don't understand that. They're not there. I know. But it's it's a, it's it's appreciation. It's just a matter of like that was really good. You know, it's like it's like cheering for something you really enjoy like cheering during the movie. Like okay, yes, no one's there to see it, but you're so overwhelmed, you're so excited about it. I can appreciate that a lot. I like going to see it opening night with a bunch of nerds because they're going to do that. And maybe it's just because I'm a wrestling fan. And that I feel like that's like, yeah, like we're in it as a community. We're cheering together. Huh. Um, this I have never witnessed in a Dutch cinema. This is why I picked this review. Hmm. Because obviously we're North American, mediocre white guys mm -hmm. from Canada. Mm -hmm. So I don't know anything about Dutch cinema. But apparently this is pretty rare. He goes on to say Dutch crowds aren't usually passionate about this. I checked the row where I was sitting and people were crying. After the movie, I was seeing people with smudged mascara. That's all I have to say about the movie. So I thought it was a pretty interesting review. Doesn't really talk about the movie, but the reactions to the movie, the emotions that people felt during this movie, which I think are important. Movies that make me feel something are ones that I love the best. They're the ones that always bring me back for more. And I felt a lot of different things during this movie. Obviously, I can't do anything but give this my highest recommendation. It's an absolute classic, a gem. I dare say I liked it better than Infinity War, which is saying something because mm. I really, really, really liked Infinity War. Is it the best Marvel movie ever? I don't know, and I really don't have time to get into that. <laughs> but I will say this. It is one worth going to see over and over and as many times as you possibly can if you get the chance. Uh, it's a main event. It's a championship, uh, world title match. It's all the great things that you want about film. Character building is excellent. Pacing is excellent. The score is excellent. Everything about this movie is excellent. People have said Robert Downey Jr. should get an Academy Award nomination for this. I have a strong... I have a feeling this 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 might get a nomination for Best Picture. I My feeling... My feeling, and this is not a knock on anybody, my feeling is if Return of the King is Oscar of the year worthy. So is Avengers end game main event. All right, Frick, what the hell am I going to say? You can just say same. I, I could, <laughs> but that's just not how I do. All right. You know what I'm going to do? What are you gonna I'm going to take Dutch boys. You're going to okay. go with the technical. I'll sure. go with the emotional. Good. That works. This is everything I wanted <laughs> since I was a kid, since I was a kid and I watched spawn since I was a kid and watched Fantastic Four, the third Spider-Man movie, I'm thinking, they don't understand. There are some people that are watching these movies and don't understand why I enjoy this stuff, why I read the comics. And it was that little kid, that little kid in front of me that finally, told, that finally shared with me the emotion that I felt when I was that age, but it's just not in the book. It's on the screen. Again, crowds yelling stuff. Uh, yeah, great. All right. <laughs> Except it was one child. <laughs> Doesn't matter. But you're right. It, Wait, it hey, works. hey, when we watch a Marvel movie, we're all kids inside. <laughs> Can't argue with that. Mm -hmm. It is the 
culmination of such hard work, dedication, and the brilliance of Kevin Feige. That man is a genius. Unquestionably. It is what I've wanted since I was a kid. I'm now 24, I think. <laughs> I don't know how old I am. I'm terrible at that. I'm what some consider to be an adult. <laughs> and I watched this movie thinking back to that first day I picked up Justice League Kingdom Come. And then I followed it up with Marvels. And then I kept reading. And now my comic book collection has expanded to Hellboy, to Swamp Thing, to Doom Patrol. All of which are now in cinemas and on TV. I'm. Have you seen Doom Patrol yet? I love it so much. It's good? It's so good. I've been meaning to watch it's it. It's so stupid. Okay. I've been it's, meaning it's to watch it. It's comic book fun. Okay. And it's... it's the, 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 I didn't mean to break the flow. No, I just okay. I was curious because I wouldn't remember. It's not the comics, by the way, which is if anybody read Doom Patrol. Well, first off, to the five of you, it's good, right? <laughs> but to the rest of you, you don't need to. It's completely different. They actually don't take themselves seriously at all. <laughs> but it, it's, it took me back to the time when I was first starting to read comics and started to connect with characters like Captain America, like Spider-Man. And then I get to see these brilliant portrayals and it, w how I felt and how I experienced these stories growing up told to people my age who didn't have that experience. People my age that didn't read comics but felt that exact same emotion that I did. It's a main event because like you said when it's a wrestling show we all got together to experience the and same you believe. thing. You believe. You believe in it. It's real to me damn it. Yeah. Yeah. You're 100% right. Wow, what a journey, man. Yes. Like, what an incredible journey that film has been. And This uh, kind of makes up for, like, the last, like, two months of crap that we've had <laughs> to review on this damn show. Now, speaking of crap, we're not through Superhero Month. We're just getting started. Yeah. And, Drew, yeah. next week you have picked DC's answer to the Avengers. <laughs> and, boy, was it the wrong answer. <laughs> what have you got for us? I have decided... That, uh, well, since I... And I want to make that clear. Drew has decided. I have decided because I went through superhero movies with a wrestling connection. And for some reason, Batman v Superman showed up. And I'm like, what in the holy hell is this? And I thought, I get to, I get to praise one movie for all its spectacularisms and then denounce another one Not for a all word, its idiocracies. That is a word. <laughs> it's the perfect contrast. You get, yeah. If you want to know... How Ropes to Reels handles good movies and bad movies. Do we got a back-to-back -back feature for you? I'm just hoping that next week's episode is not as long as this week's episode, which it again, might which be. again, might g given how long we've been talking, may end up being a two-parter. <laughs> um, God, Superman versus Batman: Dawn of Justice. Here's my question, because this yeah. is important. Kay. Which version are we watching? Regular cut, Snyder cut. There's no Snyder Cut of this. There's an there? extended edition. Oh, my God, there is. Oh, it's the extended edition. We're going to watch the extended? only 20 minutes, but I got some okay. things to say about those 20 minutes. Okay. I've never seen the extended edition, so I only went and saw the v version I saw in theaters. You don't get much, but you get enough to talk about. Well, and talk about it we will next week. Thanks very much for listening to us, folks. Don't forget to sign up for our newsletter at WrestleMedia.ca. You can also follow us and like us on social media, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Check out our YouTube channel. Subscribe there. And please rate, review, and share this podcast with everybody you know on any platform that you enjoy fine podcasts. Drew, thanks so much for being with me this week. And until next time, uh, for WrestleMedia, I'm at Adam Conta. That's Sir F Word. And when it comes to Avengers Endgame, that's a snap. This has been a presentation of Wrestle Media, where everything is wrestling and wrestling is everything. Here's what you're missing out on right now over at patreon.com slash WrestleMedia CA. I did not until old face, old America's ass was sitting on that bench. <laughs> America's old ass. <laughs> <laughs> America's old ass. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> God, if we had some... You know, if this does end up being a two-parter, I'm going to name the second part, uh, Adventures <laughs> Ending Game Part 2, America's Old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Want more? Sign up now at patreon.com slash WrestleMediaCA.